Have you ever wondered why we don't have a way to prevent, treat, or cure Alzheimer's disease? Well, tune into this episode to get a fairly simple explanation and to learn about two new resources to help keep your brain healthy. Because just as Benjamin Franklin said, an ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure. Welcome to This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Dr. Melissa Batchelor, and I'm a nurse and a nurse practitioner, and I've been providing care to older adults and their families for over 25 years. But before we dive into this week's topic, I wanted to share a few different ways you can connect with me. First of all, you can subscribe to the podcast if you haven't done that already, and you can do that from whatever platform you've joined me on. Um, so if you'd like the episode, please like it, leave a comment, or share it with someone that it might be beneficial for. You can also go to my website, melissabphd.com, and sign up now to be a part of HYSU. You can become an HYSU insider for free. And if you've ever looked for a downloadable handout to one of my other episodes and had a hard time finding it, when you join as an HYSU insider, they're all in one place for you. If you join as an MVP, HYSU MVP is a digital hub of videos, courses, resources organized by subtopics, making it even easier for you to find the information that you're looking for. And I'll also be hosting a live monthly webinar where you can submit questions ahead of time to get answers from me personally. And you can also become a podcast member here on YouTube and membership allows you early access to my content before it's released to the public. And I have more plans for the YouTube members as well. But for now, let's get to today's episode where I'm talking about the state of Alzheimer's disease research. Alzheimer's disease is a top 10 leading cause of death, and it ranks six for people over the age of 65. And so far, there have been no survivors of anyone diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, although many of those people end up dying from something else. So they die with Alzheimer's disease instead of from it. And at this point in time, there's no way to prevent, stop, or cure Alzheimer's disease because once the brain cells begin to die and the connections between the brain cells and the brain itself shrinks, that person's memory gets worse, their thinking skills get worse, and navigating everyday life becomes harder. And at least a third of people who have early stage Alzheimer's disease will progress in about three years, and that damage is irreversible. So now let's talk about the state of clinical drug trials. Well, after more than 40 years of studies and billions of dollars being spent on clinical research and funding, at least 146 drugs have failed. And there's been a lot of public controversy and despair among the public and scientists about this. But the goal is that within the next 10 years um, is that scientists will discover a way that Alzheimer's disease can be handled in the doctor's office, the same way that heart disease and diabetes are diagnosed and managed in an office setting. We hope that they'll be able to diagnose Alzheimer's disease through blood tests and treat it with a combination of drugs and lifestyle strategies. As a nurse, I'm all about the lifestyle strategies and preventing this stuff from even happening to us. So why has it been so difficult to find a drug to treat Alzheimer's disease? Well, we've had 90% of the experimental medications that have reached clinical trials don't make it to the market because either they don't work or they have really bad side effects. Alzheimer's disease research has an extremely high failure rate, um, particularly between 2004 until the mid-2021. Uh, 98 experimental drug trials failed in the late stage human studies. Even more were abandoned in lab or in early human trials. And for nearly 18 years, we did not have a single new drug for Alzheimer's disease that was approved by the FDA until 2020 to 2023. Um, but even those, the couple that have been approved since then are having trouble. And one of the issues with those clinical trials is the difficulty in actually diagnosing Alzheimer's disease. Brain scans showed that 17 to 22% of participants in the Alzheimer's clinical trials did not have amyloid plaques, so they may not have actually had the disease. And 36% of the failed phase three drug trials from 2004 to 2021 didn't test participants for the presence of amyloid plaques or tangles, which means that they could have been in a clinical trial and that that cognitive change was due to something else. And so you can't get a positive result if you have the wrong people in a clinical trial. Another major issue is that researchers may have been a little too narrowly focused on one cause when a quarter of the drugs that failed were aimed at amyloid plaques. So we've talked about plaques and tangles, but amyloid plaques are those globs of protein in the brain that were first spotted um, 117 years ago when A. Lewis Alzheimer's, who was a German psychiatrist, found those on autopsy. 
So many scientists have focused their studies on these amyloid plaques, but there are other brain cells that change with Alzheimer's disease, and there are other theories about what triggers Alzheimer's disease that are now being targeted, including um, brain inflammation, different ways to protect the brain synapses, which are the parts of the brain cells that communicate between each other, and how to improve brain metabolism, which is how the brain processes blood sugars, which is the brain's preferred fuel. So researchers now are taking a harder look at the tau tangles, which are those globs of proteins that form inside the brain cells themselves. The brain is only 3% of our body weight, but it uses 20 to 25% of the body's energy, mostly from glucose. And trouble absorbing blood sugar is called insulin resistance, which increases with age. So if your brain is, brain is deprived of energy, those neurons can die. So what is the future of Alzheimer's disease clinical trials? Well, future science is most likely going to be focused on a combination of therapies because we can't just target plaques and we can't just target tangles. And I think that brain health prevention is going to play a huge part in all of this. Um, I've done a couple of different episodes about different ways to modify your lifestyle to protect your brain health. And chronic inflammation is considered to be a major culprit with Alzheimer's disease, and it could be one of the primary drivers. So our brains have these immune cells that are called microglia, and they patrol around the brain, and they normally work like kind of trash trucks, gobbling up little scraps of amyloid protein waste before they can cause trouble. But when your brain is overwhelmed by inflammation, the microglia pump out a ton of inflammatory chemicals called cytokines, and then cytokines damage the nerve cells or those neurons and the synapses that reduce the communication between the cells. So it becomes this vicious cycle. The cells are damaged by the cytokines, the microglia start producing more inflammation, and then you end up with more damage and more inflammation. So controlling neuroinflammation is going to be at the forefront of most new treatment ideas for Alzheimer's disease in 2023. In fact, there are more drugs and human trials focused on inflammation for any other Alzheimer's disease modifying factor. Hopefully the FDA will be able to approve some of these drugs in the next three to five years. It's estimated that about 41% of Alzheimer's and related dementias are attributed to a dozen modifiable risk factors, which include managing your blood pressure, not being overweight, being physically active. So the good news about all of this is while we're waiting for the clinical trials, there's actually something you can do to protect your brain. And even when those drugs come out, it's not going to be a one size fits all program. So just like it's true that we need to do these lifestyle changes for heart disease and diabetes, bigger lifestyle changes often reverse the progression of those chronic illnesses. And the same is likely true for anybody with a mild cognitive impairment where the damage hasn't been done yet. So be sure that you're taking a good stock of your lifestyle choices right now. Now let's talk about two resources that can help you keep your brain healthy. The first is AARP Staying Sharp program. This is a new online program that will help you um, find brain healthy habits and help build them into your lifestyle. It's available online for free to both AARP members and non-members who register with the website. This gives you free access to this cognitive assessment, which is a test that will give you a snapshot of your reasoning, memory, and attention, and your performance on that day. But if you're an AARP member, you also get additional resources, including daily activities, recipes, meditations, and learning videos. The second resource is the Brain Health Resource Center. This was just launched in January of 2024, and the Resource Center has a lot of answers to questions about vital brain health topics such as Alzheimer's disease and other dimensions like stroke, depression, anxiety, traumatic brain injury, Parkinson's disease. The center also has a gateway to the AARP Hearing Center, which offers free hearing tests for AARP members and also provides information about brain health research, reports, information, and resources for caregivers, and includes links to these different resources. So thank you for tuning in to today's episode. And I just wanted to remind you that you can go to my website, melissabphd.com and sign up to be an HYSU insider for free. There you will find the resources that I just mentioned today under the helpful links. And if you've ever looked for a downloadable handout from one of my other episodes and you had a hard time finding it, when you join as an HYSU insider, they're right there under downloadable handout. So they're all in one place for you. If you join as an MVP HYSU member, this is a digital hub of videos, courses, and resources organized by subtopics. So while the big topic is Alzheimer's disease, if you're an HYSU 
MVP, you will see um, videos related to early, middle, late stage caregiver issues, financial caregiving, but it's broken down so that you can find videos that are all related. You can also become a podcast member on YouTube. That membership allows you early access to my content before it's released to the public and I have more plans for my YouTube members. And lastly, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't done that already, you can do that from whatever platform you, you're listening from today. And if you like the episode, please be sure that you like it, leave a comment and share it with someone else that it might be beneficial for. And I will see you next time. And hopefully I'll see you in H5U. 